Reed Hastings is the CEO of Netflix, and he was participating in a business conference where he was asked what he thought of the new owner of Twitter, Elon Musk. Since you are a Twitter user, I should ask, and you're on there all the time, what do you think yeah. of what's going on? I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, Elon Musk is the bravest, most creative person on the planet. I mean, you know, what he's done in multiple areas is phenomenal. Um, you know, his style is different than like, I'm trying to be like a really steady, respectable leader. You know, he doesn't care. <laughs> he's just like out there, you know? He's just, he's just like out there. He, union busting, rampant racism and sexual harassment at his Tesla plants. He's endorsing Ron DeSantis for president, putting QAnon supporters back on Twitter, platforming racists, misogynists. He's out there. Hey, freedom of speech, right? That's what Elon Musk is all about. Freedom of speech. Unless, of course, you criticize him on Twitter, then you're kicked off, your account is suspended, or you're fired. If you work for him and you criticize him, you're fired. Reed Hastings was then asked about Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle created some controversy, as you know, on your platform. And we were talk we've been talking also about platforming, um, sometimes hate speech or anti-Semitic speech or other kinds of speech. How do you think about that today? Yeah. Our brand is trying to be the most exciting entertainment company in the world. And what's more exciting than transphobia and anti-Semitism? And Chappelle is dead center for us. He is the best or one of the best. And that special was one of the most entertaining and watched specials we've ever had. We would do it again and again. Be because transgender people are four times as likely to be victims of violent assaults than cisgender people are. And we here at Netflix like to think we play a small part in that. So we clearly need to be more uh, obvious and direct about that, which we've done since, you know, with employees and with uh, people who care about Netflix that were about entertainment. Um, and Chappelle is very entertaining and, and, you know, provocative. And again, that's a, that's the core of what we're doing. He's made it very clear to his Netflix employees, he has, that if they have a problem with Chappelle's transphobia, they should quit which makes perfect financial sense because it's much cheaper for a transgender employee to quit than Netflix having to fire them for exercising their First Amendment rights to speak out against transphobia on Netflix. Look, I'm all in on the First Amendment, and it will be interesting to see what happens with Kanye. It really is, because... They say the antidote to bad speech is more speech. And I have to say that watching Kanye on InfoWars, and I'm being serious here, maybe, maybe Joe Rogan uh, and the people who say just more speech, more speech, maybe Elon Musk, maybe they're right. Maybe, I think maybe Kanye was, was so ridiculous, so stupid, so over the top, so angry that maybe this much speech sheds a light on just how broken and tired anti-Semitism truly is. Maybe. I hope so. Maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe we just flood the community with so much hate speech and bigotry that potential bigots potential shooters, we talked about stochastic terrorism, that they come to their senses, that they realize it's stupid, I, I've heard enough, and I'm not gonna be a bigot. Uh, not sure, not sure how that works. Uh, I have a feeling that, uh, I have a feeling Kanye is going to hang in there. I have a feeling Kanye will say this was performance art. He'll say he was having a, a psychiatric episode and he'll rehabilitate himself like Mel Gibson did. And then a few years later, we'll see another outburst of anti-Semitism. Look, uh, Reed Hastings at Netflix you can do whatever you want. This is America. But there is such a thing, I am told, as corporate values. We hear that a lot in capitalism, corporate values. 
what does a corporation stand for, right? Uh, and I get that that Elon Musk and Reed Hastings and Netflix, they stand for freedom of expression, and so do I. But do they also stand for inclusivity? Because I do. Do they also stand for protecting the marginalized in our community? Do they stand for acceptance? Do they stand for disempowering bullies and making everyone feel safe? You see, freedom of speech is a wonderful corporate value, but freedom of speech is a, is a part of a suite of values. And when freedom of speech eclipses the self-worth and safety of a community that's marginalized or frightened, it, it makes people like me wonder if I want to support your brand. It makes me wonder if your corporate values are in line with mine. Again, freedom of speech. You do whatever you want. I'm not trying to silence anybody, but freedom of speech means that I have the freedom to call Dave Chappelle a transphobic who, who traffics in anti-Semitic tropes. Sorry if that triggers you, but freedom of speech. I'm sorry. I thought Dave Chappelle's monologue on SNL was anti-Semitic. I'm free to say that. We're all free to say whatever we want as long as it doesn't lead to violence. I worry, though, that some things that Chappelle says do lead to violence. You know, transgender women and men four times more likely to be beaten up and killed than cisgender people. People are free to say whatever they want and people are free to react to whatever they say. It's why Moby just quit Twitter. It's why Neil Young quit Spotify to protest Joe Rogan. It's why so many people have quit Netflix. A lot of people quit Netflix. Uh, because of Dave Chappelle and season five of The Crown really sucked. Bad, bad, Real, like almost unwatchable. So, you know, freedom of expression allows Chappelle to erase the transgender community or traffic and stereotypes, traffic and stereotypes about Jews. But freedom of expression also allows me to bite back. Now, look, we are all born weak. We are born crippled. We are born needing others. As we reach adulthood, we are tricked into believing we're independent, but we're not. Our shared destiny is how we are born. We are born weak. We are born crippled and hungry. And no matter how many spurts of youthful delusion convince us we need nobody, as we get older, we, we are deluded into thinking we're independent. In the end, we are the way we are born, weak, crippled, and hungry. And it frightens us. It frightens us. We are all frightened. Some of us turn to others because that's all we know how to do. That's why we survived as babies. We turn to others. And then there are those who turn into themselves. They turn inward and they become frightened loners who cling to their money, their religion, their flag, their, their hatred, their bigotry. Uh, and they retreat into themselves. And once they do that, they turn their back on others and they require a grand unifying theory to explain away their pain. And they often turn to conspiracies. And conspiracies, conspiracy theories, give birth to bigotry, racism, and anti-Semitism. You cannot have the slave trade without conspiracy theories about blacks being inferior. You cannot have the Holocaust 
without conspiracy theories about the Jews being responsible for everything that's wrong in Germany. Where there is little to no education, where there is little to no love or security, where there are independent fools who are homeschooled, who think, who are taught to think they need nobody, that is where conspiracy theories blossom. When you traffic in conspiracy theories, when you say Democrats are pedophiles or drag queens are sexualizing children, you are no different from your run-of-the-mill racist or anti-Semite. It's all part of the same cloth. It's how the ignorant, the bigoted, the ill-educated, the ill-informed explain away everything that they don't understand. It's how they explain away the pain and the trauma they haven't dealt with. They explain away, they use the term mafia, cabal, George Soros, to explain whatever they don't understand. When you say, Alex Jones, it's the Jewish mafia, you might as well just say it's the Jews, the Jewish mafia. We are weak, we are crippled, and we must embrace that we are all weak and crippled. Our shared destiny is our birth, our life and death, all the same. We are born crippled, hungry, and frightened, and we die that way. It's our shared destiny. We must understand the blessing of weakness. Embracing the, the sanctity of our weakness allows us to live full and productive lives of forgiveness and love. Where there is no forgiveness, there is no love. And where there is no love, there is evil. And Alex Jones, look at his personal life. It is a loveless life, as is Donald Trump's, as is Kanye's, as is Nick Fuentes, who I think is a virgin. The only way somebody can be truly happy is to love, forgive, and embrace other people's weaknesses and our own. Then there are the Madison Cawthorns of the world. This is the congressman who is, I think he's about 30. He wasn't reelected. And he sadly is stuck in a wheelchair after uh, he was in a car accident. He clings to his guns. He also clings to his right-wing homophobia, even though, surprise, he was recently caught on tape sexually harassing a male staffer. There's also been allegations of coke-fueled parties. The tragedy of Madison Cawthorn isn't that he's in a wheelchair. The tragedy of Madison Cawthorn is he fights who he is. He fights his weakness. He doesn't embrace his weakness or the weakness in others. Listen to this speech he gave this week. He is at war with himself. He is leaving Congress, and this was his valedictory. This is what he left us with. Listen to how he he fights through the pain and in so doing causes pain in others. America is weak. Her sons are sickly and her daughters are decrepit. Our country now faces the consequences of enabling a participation trophy society. We are no longer the United States. We have become the nanny state. Our young men are taught that weakness is strength, that delicacy is desirable, and that being a soft metrosexual is more valuable than training the mind, body, and soul. Social media has weakened us, siphoning our men of their will to fight to rise in a noble manner, square their jaws, and charge once more into the breach of life to defend what they love. So on this precipice of disaster, I ask the young men of this nation a question. Will you sit behind a screen while the storied tales of your forefathers become myth? Or will you stand resolute against the dying light of America's golden age? 
Will you reclaim your masculinity? Will you become a man to be feared, to be respected, to be looked up to? Or will you let this nation's next generation be its final generation? With that, I yield back. That is Madison Cawthorn's farewell. Lashing out against metrosexuals because he couldn't say homosexual, which he is fighting against inside. He was caught on tape caressing and sexually harassing a male employee. It is no surprise that the very tragic Madison Cawthorn, it's no surprise that he was at Mar-a-Lago in the audience when Donald Trump declared his candidacy last month. It is no surprise that Alex Jones was one of Donald Trump's earliest supporters, as was Kanye. These are broken, crippled men who hate how they were born. They refuse to accept that just like everyone else, they share the common destiny of being weak and crippled and needing others. We are all weak. We are all crippled and we all need others. But these men fight our common destiny. They refuse to accept who they are. And that's who Trump surrounds himself with, broken souls. And broken souls become bigots, anti-Semites, and rapists. There is right and there is wrong. We all went to kindergarten. You can't say you haven't been told. You know what is right and what is wrong. You already know it. Now, I'm a Democrat because as corrupt as its leadership is, it is still the party of diversity. It should come as no surprise that the Republican Party that reinvented itself under Nixon and Reagan and became the party of white grievance. It's no surprise that the Republican Party that became the party of white grievance, eventually turned on the LGBTQ community, the frightened, undocumented workers. Now they're going after the Jews. Marx famously said, history repeats itself, first as tragedy, second as farce. Go watch a Trump rally. Go watch Kanye with Nick Fuentes on Alex Jones. They're laughing. They're giggling. It's a farce. When Chappelle goes on Saturday Night Live and slams the Jews or does his 18th special on Netflix celebrating transphobia, it's just a joke. It's just horseplay. He's a provocateur. Kanye's a provocateur. Nick Fuentes is laughing. And Alex Jones says when he testifies under oath that he's just putting on a show. Maybe, or maybe it's another tragedy repeated as farce. Maybe it's another tragedy repeated as farce. I'm all for the First Amendment, but people are getting hurt. Or in that gay bar in Colorado Springs, killed. If you enjoyed today's show, please like this and subscribe. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.